Wow, what a joy to have my friend, Jared Wilson. Jared's a prolific writer, a pastor, and his books and blogs have been read literally by tens of millions of people around the world. Uh, he loves to speak about love and to invest and, and give hope into people who are hurting. His latest book is called Love is Oxygen. It's awesome, and it discusses the impactful power of God's love and how pouring it into the world around you becomes as natural as breathing. Would you welcome with me, friends, Jared Wilson. Thanks, Hey, God. Jared. Thank you. So I'm so excited about your book, Love is Oxygen. And um, let, let's just begin with, with that. Why did you write this book? Yeah, so one of the big things that I, I've struggled with all my life was depression and anxiety. And actually the first sentence of the book uh, basically paints this picture of me sitting in my car Googling painless ways to commit suicide. And so my whole thing is that if the local church really wants to be the hope of the world, then the local church needs to step into situations in which people find themselves hopeless. And right now, a uh, big one is depression and anxiety and PTSD and suicide. And so I wrote this book because I wanted people to know that you can still be a believer in Jesus, but still struggle with things as dark as depression and thoughts of suicide. And so that's where a lot of this came out of was my personal story of encountering the love of Jesus. And then the rest of the book is then how I've seen the love of Jesus impact the lives of those around me. Yeah. And the book really helps people find that oxygen, that life, yeah. that air that they need. To get through anxiety, depression, it yeah. comes in in waves, doesn't it? Yeah. To kind of like almost ride those things out, right? Exactly. And for a lot of people, you know, prayer and worship and all these things will always be um, weapons that we use against darkness. Um, but there's also a lot of people who um, are still struggling and still hurting. And so I paint, you know, this, this picture that people... Um, need to understand it's okay to admit that they're not okay. It's okay to admit totally. that they're a believer in Jesus, but they still totally. suffer because the reality is that we're all humans and we all totally. need the grace of Jesus. I remember the, the evangelical university I went to um, really struggled, I think in the 60s, with mm -hmm. starting a psychology department because it was like, well, if we're Christians, do we really need psychology? Uh, do we need medicine? Do we need these things? And, and, and so I think there's a shame thing mm -hmm. when Christians struggle, but it's like over a third of Americans have anxiety or depression. And so, like, I remember on your Twitter, I think it was, um, you posted a picture of the medicine that you take yeah. for your, which I thought was like, whoa, that's really, because you're a pastor and- Correct. And talk, talk about that, I mean. I want people to understand that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to admit the things that they're going through. And the reality is, is that psychology and the message of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus work beautifully together. I believe yeah. with all my heart that the power of Jesus could fully free me from um, depression. It hasn't yet, but what it has done is it's given me the power to ignore the lies that depression tells me about myself. And so right now, God is continuing to give me the strength each and every day to ignore those things. But yeah, I'm, I'm fully um, open in admitting that I, I, I take antidepressants and they're not for everybody, but just like you wouldn't tell someone who um, is dealing with diabetes not to take their diabetes medicine or a girl who is dying of cancer not to take chemo, we have to understand that medication, although it is overly prescribed and a lot of people take advantage of it, sure. it does help a lot of people. People. Yeah, it's a blessing if it's done the right Correct. way. And you don't always have to take it forever. But I, I think that all those stigmas and that guilt keep a lot of Christians from getting the help they need. Yeah. So what do you say to someone, aside from that, I mean, what do you say to someone who's listening today and they say, Jared, I really struggle with anxiety or depression in a major way or have some other... What, what is it in this book do you think that will really help them with that? The biggest thing is for them to realize that they're not alone. And if you look all throughout the Bible, some of God's brightest saints dealt with the darkest of depression. Look at the yeah. book of Job, for instance. The book of Job is an up and down roller coaster of, I don't want to live anymore. There's victory in Jesus. I wish I was never born. There's power in the name of Jesus. And so we have to understand that just because you are a believer in Jesus doesn't mean you're not going to find struggles and darkness in your life. Once again, because like I said, because we're all human and that's why Jesus died on the cross is because we need that grace to cover our lives. Yeah, that's right. In fact, I would say... Like for me personally, the times when I felt the Lord most was often when I cried out to him it's in your vulnerability, dark, dark places, right? Yeah, and, and the first step in finding, you know, um, healing and redemption is admitting that you need the help. Yeah. So for anyone that's just going, I just don't know what to do, or I don't know if I can do this much longer, the first step in you finding strength and the first step in you finding that healing and that, that uh, restoration that you need is admitting that you need the help. And once you can do that and you become vulnerable and transparent, that's when you can start inviting community into your life and the help into your life that you need. There's an incredible va value and power in that too, because what I've noticed is like, 
if you're sitting in a room, let's say in a Bible study or mm -hmm. something, and everybody's pretending to be perfect, and then somebody becomes really vulnerable about, let's just say, suicide, mm -hmm. depression, or something like that, you'll see how everybody there all of a sudden starts to open up with their stuff. It's like, it's like John Ortberg, I think, who said, everybody's normal till you get to know them. Yeah. Right? And like, once you get to know, it's like, there's, it's something about, there's something about being vulnerable and honest about your stuff that really helps you almost feel like, not only am I not alone because God is with me, but I'm not alone in the sense that we all struggle with things. Yeah, my wife says it all the time, and uh, she actually got it from an author named John Acuff, where he talks about the gift of going second. And what it is, is when you admit all the brokenness and junk in your life first, it allows the person across the table from you to now drop their walls and admit the things that they're going through too, because you just gave them the gift of going second to know that they're not alone, they're maybe just as messed up as you are, <laughs> and, it, and it creates this uh, community where people are feeling okay to admit when they're struggling. Awesome. The book is called Love is Oxygen. The author is Jared Wilson. And uh, you can get it anywhere books are sold here in the church. Uh, Jared will be outside selling it. And I just want to encourage you, if you just need some, just some fresh air, you just kind of feel stuck, or you just need some energy in your, your walk with God, this book is really terrific. It's going to help you. It's an easy read. You'll love it. And um, Jared, thank you so much for being Thanks here so much, today. Man. We I appreciate, appreciate you and your ministry. Thanks, God bless man. you.